I wanted to talk about your watermelon bass. How long have you been doing it and what are you experiencing from it? Today is my 159th day of eating nothing but watermelon. Now that's, that's the wow. <laughs> Yeah, that's the journey. That's what I've been doing. Hi, I'm Chris James and you're watching Healthy Alternative. We've got uh, Brother Kev with us today and uh, we were actually just getting to know each other a little bit um, kind of before you know we start the video and I was like yo we got to stop this conversation and start the recording so people can get um, you know a part of this this conversation because you know you 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 just said something that I've never heard before like not not in a serious way so I'm I'm super curious I know we probably just be all over the place today but you just told me that you haven't actually had a bath or a shower in the past year. At least a year. Right. Now, just, how how do you get to that point? I guess it started with, uh, you know, once I changed up, you know, my eating and just got on fruits, um, at least at least majority fruits. I noticed that I wasn't having body odor anymore. You know, um, like I wasn't having bad breath anymore. Mm. You know, um, I wouldn't get musty no more. Like I don't go work out. Like I wouldn't get musty or anything. Like, you know, um, even like if I pass gas, like it wouldn't. Like I wouldn't smell it. And so you couple that with what I know about the water in the city. Mm. You know, I've been very you know, about the water for a long time, you know, because it's just too much stuff in that water. They doing too much with the water. <laughs> yeah. You know, and I just, over time, I grew less and less comfortable with standing in that contaminated water. And even, you know, I got filters, you know, I've got two filters on my shower head and, you know, it's still not getting everything out. Mm-hmm. You know, and then eventually it just got to, well, do I really need to shower every day? You know, especially when I don't have body odor, like what am I doing it for? Right. You know, it just didn't make sense to me anymore. Mm. You know, and so like I'm looking at my skin, like my skin look good, I look good, like I don't stink. You know, when I'm out in public, when I'm at the gym or whatever I'm doing, you know, I work in construction, you know, and and uh, and I work on the commercial end. So I'm often working in businesses where business is being conducted. So I'm around a lot of people, um, a lot of women. Nobody's saying you need to shower or you stink or you musty or like, mm -hmm. you know, nobody looking at me funny. So it's like, well. Is this just more societal programming for me to take a shower every day? You know, and it just making sense to me. Mm -hmm. So, and it's not, I can't even say it's something that I consciously did. You know, I just stopped doing it. It just kind of happened, you know, and then before you know it, I'm like, whoa, shower in like three months. And I don't stink, like, <laughs> I don't stink me, you know? And so, like, the shock of it, and then I just, you know, I just don't see a point in it no more. Right. So, so I'm going I'm to say, I'm going to say something, and I'm going to add a little context, too. So, uh, when you originally said that, I was thinking, I only ever heard this once before. It was actually pretty recent. This uh, TikToker or something, maybe she was on Instagram, and she was like, it seemed like she was trolling people because like I think she plays this character and she's supposed to be I think she's supposed to be like a 50 year old woman, but she looks like she's like 30 something or whatever. And she like how a 50 year old woman looks so young. And she's like, I've been telling you, I only take a shower once a year. You know what I mean? So that was the first time I ever even heard anybody say this type of thing before. And I'm like, OK, I'm pretty sure she's trolling. But. Now I used to work in construction too. So when I when I started my my health and wellness journey, you know, I was uh we were doing um I was working on an airport and um if I forgot to put deodorant on by 9 a.m. 
the body odor was so bad that I was embarrassed. Then I started fasting, pretty much drinking exclusively just water and like, you know, herbal tea and stuff, juice. Um, and then I also changed my diet to like an alkaline diet. And I no longer needed deodorant. I don't wear deodorant anymore. I haven't worn deodorant. And I was actually just explaining this in my one of our private groups. Not only did I stop using deodorant, but I stopped using soap to, to wash. And people were just like, what? And I'm like, bro, I just all I, I mean, because I'm basically just, I'll just basically wipe dirt. I'm just getting dirt off me. That's basically all I'm doing. So just to back up what you're saying, like, and, I, and I'm not even at your level. Like, I'm not doing like fruitarian or, and you know, we'll, we'll get more into exactly what you're doing. But um, I'm not even at that level. And I'm already experiencing that, you know, where the bowel movements don't stink. I literally just was talking about, no, no, no. It was in my academy call. That's what it was. It was in my academy call last night. So uh, if anybody's out there listening and they think, oh, no, that's some BS. Nah, I'm co-signing. Like, it's it's legit. And I also was telling you before we turn the camera on, when I came off of my like dry fasting and my, you know, fasting early on, I was so sensitive to the water, I could smell the chemicals in the water and it would burn my skin. So I had to limit how much time I spent in the shower. And that got that caused me, I got all these filters and I also got like a, in a whole home filter. So when it comes in from the city, I got a, uh, you know, a big old filter that just cleanses it all. And then we we use, you know, distilled water and like we we use purified water um, as much as possible. So. I just wanted to co-sign because I know some people be thinking, oh, he's lying to it. Nah. And then also I'll say this, too. And I don't know if you've thought about this. When you think about like a newborn baby. Like a newborn baby doesn't get musty. They don't really need to take baths and stuff. You only really, you clean them up because they'll like throw up on themselves or something. But they have like a sweet smell to them. And then when you look at animals in nature, you know, animals will run around. They not, they don't use deodorant. You know what I mean? They'll have a bowel movement. They're not even wiping their butt. <laughs> so it's levels to it that I think people haven't got an opportunity to see in modern time. Um, so anyway, I just thought that was incredible. Now, I do you know, want to... Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah, I just wanted to jump in you know, while we're still on this before we get off of it. But um, this is definitely, you know, brainwashing, right? Because mm -hmm. hygiene begins with what's inside. Hygiene is an inside job, not an outside job. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't eat dead animals and then just think that you're not going to stink, Right? There's dead animals rotting inside of you. And how are you not going to, of course, you're going to smell. You know, and people think all of that stuff is eliminated, but it's not. Because if it was, then people wouldn't get heart disease and cancer and diabetes if mm. everything was eliminated. And then just the fact that you have body odor is proof that everything is not eliminated. Hygiene begins with what you put in your body. Hygiene has nothing to do with sprinkling water on your skin and just wiping off dead skin cells because that's all that really is. You know, I mean, unless you're playing in the mud or something, you know. So even like my uh, mouth health, you know, my mouth health has improved tremendously. Mm. Now I don't even brush my teeth every day. Like I'm probably brushing my teeth like. I don't brush or floss every day at all. Mm. You know, um, a couple of weeks in between brushing, you know, and flossing. And, you know, before, you know, I was eating the way I was eating, I always had problems with bleeding gums and my gums being sore, you know. And I have a, I have a tube way in the back that has a hole in it, right? like a significant size hole in it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been to the dentist and had my teeth cleaned and, you know, and they, you know, the x-rays and, you know, check and everything. And they've told me, they've been telling me for probably close to a year that I need to have a pool. And I'm just not feeling it. 
And even with a hole in my tooth that, you know, food gets stuck in it. Like, I get watermelon seeds stuck in that hole. <laughs> right? That's how big it is. Yeah. But there's no pain. There's no, like, toothache. There's no nerve pain. There's no nothing. And it feels like it feels strong because this is the side I chew on. Mm. And I'm crunching up watermelon seeds and everything on this side. And that tooth is playing a role. And there's no weakness or anything. Mm -hmm. So aging begins with what you put in your body, not what you put on your body. Mm -hmm. You know, that's why people have to shower. You know, people that's not eating right, they have to shower every day. I know people that shower two, three times a day. That's a sign. Yeah. Like you should smell that bad that you feel the need to shower two, three times a day. And you're showering and you're putting on deodorant. And so, yeah, I just wanted to, you know, mention that before we moved off of this because it's, I don't know, it was a game changer to me when I, realize that hygiene is about what you put in your body yeah bro that was a that was an amazing uh add-on and actually you you uh i once once again i just want to co-sign because so when i started my journey i was i was looking to eliminate chemicals that's when i realized that we were consuming all these chemicals because people think about consumption they think about food you know but it's like what are you putting on your skin what are you smelling and so I got rid of the mouthwash. That was one of the first things I did. Obviously, uh, the deodorant. But I also got rid of traditional toothbrushes. And I started using this Miswalk tooth, uh, the wood. I don't know if I got one. You know, it's just a little took. It's a, it's a twig with uh, little fibers. Because um, I always wondered, like, what did people do for, for tooth care before toothbrushes were invented? You know? It's like you just chew on a root or a twig or whatever. and like I don't use toothpaste anymore. I haven't used toothpaste in what well, it's been four four years, maybe something like that. So once again, just co-signing. Just and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not at your level. So I still get debris on my teeth, you know, like build up. So I still, you know, clean it off with the with the uh the stick, but uh my breath changed tremendously. And then I also found that I had um tonsil stones. So when I changed my diet, the, the tonsil stones stopped being produced. And so my breath also improved. So I did want to, I wanted to, I wanted to kind of talk a little bit about like your beginnings with your wellness journey and what, in, you know, in, encouraged you or inspired you to even start this way. Or maybe you could just enlighten me. Is this something that you, you learned about as a child? Like, what what was the inception of this this journey, this wellness journey? For me, it was uh, being overweight. You know, I was uh, I was about eighty pounds overweight, and um, after having kids, and you know, they're getting to those ages to where uh, you know they like to run around and play and everything. Mm -hmm. um, you know, me just you know me not being able to play with them like I wanted to. You know, getting tired quick, you know, um, I had struggled, you know, with weight loss for a long time. You know, I was working out, you know, pretty regularly, mm -hmm. but um, weight loss truly is goes back to it's more about what you're putting in your body and what you're doing at the gym. And so, uh, you know, it was, I was struggling and. That started me to reading labels. You know, I started wanting to know what was in the things I was eating. You know, and that that's a rabbit hole right there that, you know, <laughs> goes on and on and on and on and on. Like, it's really, like, people would, some people would really have a hard time. Even me, like, I had a hard, like, in the beginning of me researching what I was reading, I was really having a hard time believing, like, this is really legal. Like, this is criminal, what they're putting in these products and selling them to us to eat as food. 
So I'm reading these labels and like everything in it. Linked to cancer, linked to heart disease, linked to diabetes, disease after disease after disease. And uh, so that's what really started it for me, you know. And then, you know, learning about things that there's chemicals that they put in there that make you eat more, mm. you know, make you crave their product, you know. And I'm like, oh, I got to, you know. And so I just started eliminating things one by one. You know, and in the beginning, like, it, it's been a journey for me. Like, I probably started reading labels around 10 years ago. You know, and at that time, I wasn't aware of fruitarianism, veganism, like, none of that, you know. But I'm just making better, you know, choices, better dietary choices. And so, like, that portion of the journey basically looked like me starting off drinking vitamin D cow's milk. Learning about that, going to 2%, thinking I'm doing better, which, you know, it's a step in the right direction. Then learning about that, going to skim milk, and then learning about that, going to almond milk, right? And then just getting off milk completely. Right. So in every area, that's pretty much what my transition looked like. And there could be years in between those periods of, say, like me going from 2% to skim milk. You know, and in between that time, I'm thinking, you know, I'm doing good. Like, I'm eating healthy now. And then it's like, nope. No, you're not. Like, I would hear somebody say something somewhere or something. And it's... And so, eventually... Like that just kept happening until I just got to this place to where nothing's good, right? Everything that man makes for us to eat is linked to disease. Everything, 100%. Like I tried so hard to hold on to my lifestyle, you know, and just, you know, that sad diet, the standard American diet, just hold on to something. And it's just like, there was nothing there. Like, even when I was eating, uh, you know, vegan, you know, like one of my like favorite things was like vegan chips, you know, and uh, like some type of dip, like guacamole or something, you know, I was addicted to the chips, mm. it's the starches in the chips. I was addicted to it, you know, like, I got. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you the story. But this is how addicted I was, and you never know how addicted you are to something until you don't have it no more, until you're in a position where you have to go without it, mm -hmm. and then the truth comes out, right? So the day before I started my watermelon journey, I was literally digging in my trash in my backyard to dig out some vegan chips and some guacamole that I threw away two days ago. Mm -hmm. This is in the summertime. So, you know, that guacamole was going bad. Yeah. But what happened was I got in the house, you know, it was like after 10 at night. And, you know, I, I stay alone. I'm sitting, sitting on the couch and I'm just, I'm just sitting there. You know, it's like, I'm just bored. Like it's nothing to do, you know? And I thought about them chips. And, and this is, you know, like, I realized that, you know, I would eat, you know, to feel better. Mm. I was eating for all the wrong reasons. You know, I would eat for comfort, to feel better. You know, it was like, if I'm bored, and then I start eating something like, you know, these chips and this guac, I'm not bored no more. Right. Like, I'm, like it's, I don't know, but it makes everything better. Right? And so... That thought popped in my head, and I mean, without, I've never even done anything like, like this, but without any hesitation, I got up off the couch, I went outside, and I fished those uh, chips and that guacamole out. Went back in the house, sat back on the couch, put Netflix on, and I'm just eating. Like, I didn't just do that. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so, like, I had bought three bags 
and all of this. And I ate like a bag and a half and I threw the rest away. And I threw the block away. Right? Because that's addiction. I didn't want to eat it in the first place. But I was craving it. And, you know, I really wasn't understanding what was going on exactly. I didn't really understand, like, yo, you really addicted. Like, this is like a real addiction you're dealing with, mm. you know? And, you know, this is one of the things that just kind of highlighted it for me, you know? And um, that was like one of my last addictions, like, really had a hold on me. You know, them starches, you know, and them breads and them grains and all that stuff. That's a real addiction. And so that's what I was doing the night before I started this watermelon. And I don't want to jump too far ahead, but I just want to, you know, just tap in on that and just talk about the addiction. You have to go without it. Like the only reason I did that is because nothing was open. And there was only one place I would go to get those from because, you know, I'm, I'm still conscious about what I'm right. eating. I like the ingredients. You know, it's cassava flour. You know, it's not GMO corn or like any of the other stuff that they use. You know, cassava flour is only like four ingredients, you know. So I'm still paying attention to what I'm eating, but it's addictive. And this is, these are vegan options, you know. So, yeah. That's That's heavy. That's heavy, man. I appreciate you, you know, sharing that. Um, it's funny because before I ever started doing any type of learning or teaching, I never, I didn't know that food addiction was a thing, you know, like it's so, it's so normal in our society and in America, especially, um, I don't know, probably like 60, 70% of people, if not more, I feel like I'm shooting it low are addicted to food because all the foods are addictive. So, you know, people are going to be addicted to things and, and nobody really talks about it. Nobody. It's crazy because like as soon as you, you know, let's say you're 100 pounds overweight, you eat McDonald's every day, tacos, burritos, you know, off the truck, whatever. Everything's all good. And then you start talking about, man, I'm going to just do fruit only. Now, now, wait a minute. Now, what you going to where you going to get your protein and where you going to, you know, and everybody becomes a, a health expert. As soon as you decide you're going to do something different from what everybody else is doing. But at the time, it's all good. Like we're all addicted. Everybody's happy, you know? Uh, so that's, 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 that's deep. That's deep. And Steven. And chime in. Yeah, go ahead. Chime in on what you just said, because uh, like, like, I feel this is really, really important to say. This is something that's helped me. It's helped me tremendously on my journey, right? Food addiction. There's no such thing of food addiction, right? Because what is food, right? This is like, this is where they got us in. Like, what is food? I you got know? you. McDonald's ain't selling food. Right. And then there is food. You know, right. food grows in nature, right? So 95%, I say nine, 90 to 95% of what's in every grocery store across this country is not even food. Mm -hmm. And if you read these labels, you'll see like, this is not food. You know, like sugar, sugar is not food. Mm -hmm. Sugar is literally a drug. Yeah. Right? Dairy is not food. That's, you know, like cow's milk is food for a baby cat, but not for a human being. You know, so like there's there's not a restaurant in this country that I know of that sells food. You know, dead animals are not food. You know, it might, I mean, be food for another animal. You know, but not for us. We were never, never, animals weren't put here for us to eat. You know, and I don't want to get too deep into that, but, you know, there's reasons why these diseases exist and people are not making the 
the connection that it's all diet related. It all has to do with what you allow in your body. You know? And so when you, like, food does not comfort you. It doesn't make you feel better. If you're having a rough day and you eat some fruit, you're still going to be having a rough day after that. <laughs> so it's not like I used to eat just to feel. If I had a rough day, I would just, what do I want to eat? And I would go to a restaurant and I would order four or five different plates and just, you know, like that's addiction. I would eat a little, like whatever I had a taste for. You know, like most people are eating solely for taste and that's addiction. You know, and you don't eat fruit for that. You know, that's why people don't go to fruit. You know, if they're having a rough day, you kind of already need to be emotionally stable, you know, to, you know, live this type of lifestyle where you're just eating food. You know, those things are called comfort foods. But like, if you just read the labels, like it's all full of drugs and chemicals and everything in it is linked to some sort of disease. So, you know, man cannot make food. You know, all this processed stuff, all these things that men create in laboratories and, you know, with scientists and, you know, mass produce and factories, that's not how food is made. Food grows in nature, on bushes and trees and vines and out the ground. So if you're not eating something from nature, you know, in its natural state, you know, then that's just not food. So that's all I wanted to say. Like, it's huge because, like, I have, I use that a lot, which I haven't been dealing with cravings um, anymore. But, uh, like, when I used to deal with them, like, I'm walking through the, you know, the grocery store and, you know, I'm in the produce aisle section and, you know, I'm getting my fruit. But then I got to walk through all these other areas to get to the register. and. I'm seeing all this stuff and I want to go here and there and there and go to the, you know, where they uh, got the hot meals. And stuff. I just constantly have to tell myself, yeah, that's not food. Mm. That's not food. That's not food. You know, so. I got you. Yeah, I'm, I'm in I'm in alignment with that. Um, I actually had a guest on uh, Chef Kepra. He calls it food stuff. <laughs> uh, for you. yeah so one of my favorite researchers broke it down and basically said that we've degraded from you know starting off we started off eating food as you you know go back in history and then we slowly changed from you know eating the food then you do the meat and then you do um uh it's like um i'm missing one but it it ends up being chemical food which is drugs it's all drugs it's it's not real food. There's no nourishment. There's no nutritional value, you know. And even with the the grains and everything, right? Like, cause cause even you think about like stuff that is grown by plants, but man has gone ahead and manipulated that, and then they bleach it and they adulter it before you even get it. So you think you're getting a product that comes from nature, and even then you're not. And that's essentially what you were saying when you talk about. 95% of the stuff in a grocery store is not food. It's very difficult to go to a grocery store and get food. And this is why I started my garden. Because I, re I realized this, you know, and it, it's kind of an overwhelming thought, depending on where you are in your health and wellness journey. Like for those who are still eating McDonald's, I know this sounds overwhelming. They're like, well, F it. You know what? I can't find food. But as you start going through this process, you start to understand the importance of it. And then you prioritize things differently. And then you start seeing solutions to the problems. And for me, I was like, I got to start a garden. Like there's no getting around it. And I mean, I even even when you go to the, you know, like back in the day, you could stop by on the, st on the side of the road. They had the fruit carts and stuff like that. Uh, my brother, Steve, went and stopped at one of the food carts on the side of the road. And he was just like, where you guys get your, your stuff from? You grow it. 
the dude was like, bro, we get these from Whole Foods. We get this from Kroger and we just sell it. <laughs> so you, you think these guys got a farm and it's like, you know, farmer's market type vibe on the side of the road. And that's not even the case anymore. So that's a that's a, a good point to make. And then, like you said, people can use that as fuel uh, because, you know, they're putting addictive they're putting addictive chemicals in your food so that you consume more. So they want to fatten you up and they want to suck you for your resources. And they also want you in a, a state where you don't want to do anything. You're not trying to you're not trying to better yourself. You're not trying to empower your community. You're just watching TV, watching sports, eating chips. They dumb it down, right? I just uh, I just made a video about this, but I was I was thinking about how you know, kind of grew up hearing about pit bull fighting. You know, I knew people that fought pit bulls, and the first thing they do with a pit bull, you know, when they're intending on fighting, is they change their diet. That's the first thing they do. Mm. And they do that to make them more aggressive and more violent, right? And so they feed pit bulls, like they feed them things that's not even food. Like, I, for example, I've heard stories of them feeding them gunpowder, you know? And wow. so when you carry that over to us, it's literally the same thing that they're doing to us, mm -hmm. right? And it doesn't seem like... We aren't even aware of it, honestly, because one, they brainwash you into thinking you're eating food, right? Then they make you think that it's healthy, that it's good for you. You know, people eat dead animals because they think it's good for them, for the protein primarily. People drink milk from a cow because they think it's good for them, primarily for the calcium, you know? So they make you think it's good. But if you dig a little deeper, you know, these things don't just affect you physically. They definitely affect you mentally. They affect the way you think. They affect everything about you, right? Because these things are very low frequency. And if you consume things that are low frequency, you're going you're gonna to operate. You're going to function on a low frequency. Right. And so what are low, what is low frequency? Like, what does that consist of? Like deception and hate and anger, violence, you know, jealousy, envy, insecurity, depression, anxiety, stress. All of these things are low frequency energies. And high frequency energies, you know, love, joy, peace, gratitude. You know, things like this. These, you will never be up here eating things that are down here. You know, and so, again, yeah, going back, none of this is food. This is all chemicals. And scientists, like, you got to understand, like, scientists, they study and research, and they test these chemicals primarily out on mice and rats because they're supposedly so identical to us, you know? Um, and they study their behaviors, right? If we put this chemical with this chemical, how is it gonna make them act? Mm. And when, when they come up with the desired result, well, if you put this with this, it makes them hungry longer. If you do this and this and this, when they normally would get full, they won't be full. They'll still want to eat. You know, if you do this and this, it contributes to ADHD. You know, like ADHD, for example, like red dye 40 has been is pretty well known to be in for being linked to that. They put red dye 40 in all the kids' stuff. All right. The candies, cereals, you know. For a die for you, like it's known that it's linked to ADHD. So you have these kids in class that's hyperactive and all these things, and you know can't sit down and blah blah blah. Being unruly, it goes back to what they're eating. 
you know, it's the same for everyone. And people don't realize this. And, you know, in society, we, we just normalized all the wrong things. We normalized the low frequency things. Like stress is just normal. Like we just believe we, you know, stress is just normal. Like we're gonna experience or have stress. Mm. Like it's a part of life. You know, we think anxiety, worry is normal. Like there's just certain things that you should worry about. You know, like so many people are living in fear. You know, hate is so normalized, you don't even notice it. Like most people don't even notice it. You know, and all of these things have become normalized. And so it just all flies under the radar. You know, but the truth is like, you don't never have to be depressed. You don't ever have to be stressed out. Like I don't, I don't deal with that stuff. Like I used to, I used to suffer from depression and be suicidal, stressed out, full of anxiety, you know, hateful and just just violent and just evil, like, and just, like really, really dark, mm. you know, and it's like, I, it's total 180 now, you know, but all of this is linked to what you're eating. And when you're not eating food, this is just what it's going to be because you're literally poisoning your body. You're poisoning your mind, you know? And so, yeah, I just wanted to, mention that yeah man you you hey you doing it <laughs> i i agree with everything and also once again I, I have my own personal experiences with what you're saying you know i dealt with uh my own level of depression and i wouldn't say it was extreme it was actually very mild it was it was so mild that i i didn't detect it other people around me didn't detect it and it, i didn't realize i was living in that continual state of depression until I came out of it and I was looking back and I'm like was I depressed and so now seven eight years later I don't deal with that at all I don't deal with I tell people all the time I don't have bad days I I, ha I haven't had a bad day in so long yeah. it's like my perspective on life is different the way things when when something quote unquote bad happens the way I perceive it and the way I interact with it is so different. It's like, I don't let something go with me all day long, you know? And once again, and I was, when I was going through my journey, I was studying animals, which I think you just learned a tremendous amount from nature. And it seemed like for the most part, animals did not, um, they would get angry, right? You could, you could do something in a moment and get an animal angry, but they didn't hold grudges. Because I'm thinking, if that's the case, why aren't whales sinking all ships? Like whales know that we're murdering them, right? For their for their resources, their 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 hide, their body, whatever you call it, their blubber, and they they let us make it for the most part. You know, I've I've heard recently that people have been getting attacked by whales and stuff. But I don't I don't know, but I mean, for the most part, they let us make it. So. And then, of course, you've got, you know, it's like you're you're running around. You got all these grudges and all this stuff. And all you're doing is making yourself sick. The person who did the thing to you ain't even thinking about you. <laughs> like they're, they're doing their thing, living their life. And you angry and getting sick and they just living life. So, yeah, this is yep. this is all very powerful stuff to understand. Very, very. Because we we. Man, like, and, you know, I don't want to get too deep into this, but they know what they do. You know, the, the people at the top, you know, they know what they, like I said, they study all this stuff. They research all this stuff. Like, it's not new information that, you know, the, the chemicals that they're putting in the things they're selling us to eat is linked to cancer and die. Like, this isn't new. Like, I've read studies where you know th these types of things were revealed like 40 50 years ago you know um johnson's baby powder not that long ago i don't know if you're familiar with that but they were being sued because the talk or talc however you say that and their product 
was causing cancer in people. And, you know, so much so that a lawsuit was brought against them. You know, like people are, and they know the thing, like, not catching them by surprise. You know, it's different when you don't know. Mm -hmm. That's totally different. But when you know, and you know, you don't care who dies. Mm. Just put it out. You know, and that's the narrative for all of the stuff they're selling. You know, that's the that's just the mentality. You know, and then you know they like the way they like they're so crafty with how they use their words and describe things <laughs> like they. They purposely tell you, oh, this has vitamin C, but they won't tell you that it's synthetic, that that's not even real. Mm -hmm. You know, all these supposed, you know, vitamins and minerals and things that are in, you know, some of these products, none of that's real. You know, because you can't take vitamins from a whole food source and just put them in whatever you want. Right. And then it's going to be the same thing. If that was the case, you could have like, I don't know, you could do it to beer, you could do it to liquor, you know, you could, this is, hey, let's just take some nutrients out of this and let's just put it in the beer. Right. Be healthy vegan beer. Like, you can't do that. And so that's what they do. All of that stuff is processed. None of it's nutritious. Like you said earlier, you know, um, these products have no nutritional value in them at all. Like none. And this is what most people are eating. So it, it affects you. Like me. And, and I like when you said that, uh, like about the depression, you know, you didn't even realize it until you were on the other side of it and look back. And mm -hmm. like, that's why they say hindsight is 2020 because you don't realize it. Like I'm digging in a trench for chips, not realizing I have an addiction mm. until I'm on the other side of it. And then I look back, like, whoa, I was in bad shape. You know, and um that that's the state that most of society is in. You know, they don't realize. This how much they're being affected by, you know, the things they're eating and consuming because that's all they know. You know, if you think about it, we, you know, the average citizen, you know, is being fed like this since like in the womb. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when our moms was pregnant with us, most of our moms, they didn't know how to eat. They didn't know the stuff that we're talking about. You know, so it's really like when a woman's pregnant, it's just don't drink, don't smoke. You know, it's, that's it. Everything else is fair game. You know, not understanding that everything they're eating is just full of poisonous chemicals that cause disease. You know, so even the prenatals, even the yeah. prenatal vitamins. Yeah, the the uh, the formula. You know, like uh, my son just had a, he just had a daughter. And, you know, I went to the hospital to visit and they got this, uh, you know, like this formula. She was having complications with breastfeeding. So they brought this formula in and I'm looking for the ingredients. They didn't even put them on there. Wow. So you don't even know what's in it, but I know it ain't better than breast milk. You know, and they'll try to sell it like that, like it is. Right. But, but there's substitute for breast milk, right? But yeah, it's it's the rabbit hole is deep, <laughs> deep and deep. I like how you said too, like this could really be overwhelming for people that you know are just fully submerged, submerged into the you know the standard American diet. You know, to hear something like this, like I've heard, I've had people say to me, like, well, what are we supposed to eat? I guess I'll just eat 
the grants and something like that, you know, like yeah. sarcastically, right? But this is a lot to take in, but it's all the truth, you know? And that's why, like, for me, you know, it was a very slow transition getting to this point. It's not something you can just do overnight, you know? It's like people, you know, see what I'm doing on this watermelon and they'll go from standard American diet and say, I'm going to do 90 days. Right. In the morning. And it's like, that's not really realistic, though, because you don't understand what you're dealing with. Like, you're dealing with some real addictions. And they're going to rise to the surface when you stop feeding them. You know, you can get moody. You know, you get angry. You'd be mad and like I've been through all this. You'd be mad and don't even know why. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, this is all, you know, symptoms of addiction. You start having cravings and all these things. This is all symptoms of addiction. You know, so it's really, it's really a big deal. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. I wanted to, I wanted to uh touch on something real quick that you had you you know because we we've been talking about the malnutrition right you people are eating food and they're not uh they're not getting nutrition but then you see all this obesity right and one of the things that i think people got to reframe is the obesity is the result of malnutrition we think we think malnutrition is the the little baby in africa with the bloated stomach you know skinny arms skinny legs um, but the reality of malnutrition in America is the obesity. And I think people aren't, they're not able to, they're not able to understand that. So I wanted, I wanted people to understand that that's what malnutrition looks like. And so now you can see how many people are malnourished because, you know, look at the extreme cases of obesity we have in this country. And then the other thing I wanted to touch on too, because like when it comes to ingredients, I used to think, okay, they're doing this to make it cheaper. They're doing it to provide some type of experience that you can't get otherwise. And then when I started doing this research, I'm like, wait, no, they're doing it literally just to poison us. There's no other reason for it. For example, in order to dye something, you don't have to use artificial dyes. There are very potent fruit dyes that that you can use and they used to use in the past if you want to artificially make something look more bright or or you know vibrant or change the color you could use something that wouldn't have a toxic effect um and then when i when i when i started to learn about like juice because before before i really started doing like my my health and wellness journey i would have fresh squeezed juice sometimes but it was nothing that i really looked for or really had a good understanding of so when I started drinking fresh juice for real, like for the first the first time I juiced grapes, for example, I was blown away at how sweet it was. I'm like, yo, this stuff is so sweet. I got to put water in it. So why would they take a, a artificial flavor to make a grape drink? Like, it doesn't make sense. You could put all these extra chemicals and all these extra ingredients in it when you could just use the raw thing. You know? Yeah, it's definitely uh it's definitely to make it cheaper. And it's it's just this love for money that so many people have. You know, money is literally like the God that a lot of people serve. Mm. And they'll do anything to get it. You know, everything in that industry, like I can't even call it the food industry because that's not what it is, but everything that they make, like the whole goal, 100%, all they're focused on is profit. How can we increase profit? Well, the cheaper we can make this, while still making it taste the same as the real thing, the more money we can make, right? And they just, they just don't care about nothing else, you know? And then there's another way I like to look at this. 
right? Everybody is scratching everybody's back, right? So you have these companies, these large corporations that are making the things that we eat. Then you have these chemical companies that come along and say, we can make your product more addictive with this chemical, right? So now you get all these additives, you know, all these unnatural additives that are addictive, you know? And then from there, as I mentioned earlier, they already know, like everything in their products has been researched study mm. by scientists so if this causes cancer they know if it causes heart disease diabetes adhd alzheimer's like whatever it is they already know mm. right and so then you have the, what i call the sick care industry right and their customer is sick people meaning if there's no sick people coming in them doors. They're not making any money, right? So how do we keep people coming in? You know, they're, I mean, they're living like fabulous. Yeah. You know, yeah. financially speaking, you know, it's like a trillion dollar industry, <laughs> you know, from primarily selling drugs, you know, but uh, like my mom was just in the hospital, like, maybe a few months ago, I'm looking at her plate, right? Okay, so like you talked about fasting, when you, when your body is not well, your body will, like you will automatically lose the desire to eat, mm -hmm. you know? And this is how the body heals itself. It needs that energy for digestion to repair itself. So you'll lose your appetite. That's nature at work but in the hospitals they feed you right and i'm and and nothing they feed you is food i'm looking at our trade like like i understand the game so like i'm not shocked but i'm looking like nothing on there is food like nothing they're not even feeding you food you know and but they're not there to cure you or heal you because then they will put themselves out of business they're there to help you to live with whatever disease or ailment you have as comfortably as possible yep. i want you to keep it forever so they can prescribe you drugs they'll prescribe you drugs to you know offer you to you know deal with the pain so it's more bearable. You could go to work, you know, function as, you know, as best as you can. And that's, that's how they make money. Right. So, you know, they don't address your nutrition. They don't, you know, like cancer, for example. You know, I used to support St. Jude's, um, mm -hmm. Christian, I mean, not Christian cancer. Uh, yeah. Chair, chair. The children, the children cancer, the right? Children's Yep. Yep. I used to support them faithfully. Thought it was a great organization. This is all about the kids. Like they do, like they put the parents up in free house and like they take care of everybody. Until I started, you know, discovering that our healing of cancer just by eating grapes. Yeah. Right? So now you got to question some things like, is this really a good chair? Like if they if they were really about helping these kids and curing them, you could do something as simple as, you know, giving them some, giving them sour sopper, putting them on grapes. Fruit. That's all they need. Just put them on a whole fruit diet, right? There's a book by uh, Johan, or I believe it's Johan Brandt called the great cure and this woman had cancer she had some severe stages of cancer 
for years, she had been going to hospital, to hospital, to hospital, treatment after treatment, and only got worse. And I don't remember how she found out about grapes, but she started eating number grapes. And I mean, in a relatively short period of time, cancer was completely gone. Now, this is her telling her story, right? And so why aren't we looking into this if, if we're really wanting to help these kids? So then you realize they don't really want to help these kids. Like, you know how many kids are dying of cancer when they don't have to? Mm. Just because they're looking for some type of treatment that they can make millions and billions and gazillions of dollars on? Yeah. Just feed them grapes. Right? But their customers. I see people, if kids don't have cancer no more, they're out of business, you know? And so it all goes back to money again. You know, you're talking about trillions of dollars at stake here. You know, these, these drug companies, you know, they're kind of on the, you know, the tip of the food chain of it all. Like they're sitting on the throne, you know? I mean, they're influencing the information and, and the, the curriculum and med school and everything. Right. They're not teaching anyone about healing. You know, and so it's it's just a big conglomerate where, you know, they're scratching their back, they're scratching their back, they're scratching their back, they're scratching their back. And it's just a circle. It just keeps repeating and everybody's eating off of our suffering. Yeah. You know, but it all, really, it all comes down to our health is our responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, they're not in business to care about us. Like, we don't care about them. You know, you go to the doctor, you don't care about them. It ain't because you miss them and you wanted to see them and spend time with them. You need them, right? And they need you. And it's really just a business transaction. There's no, there's no bond. There's no connection. Their job is to make as much money off of you as possible. That's what they learn to do. And that's what they do. They're very good businessmen. It's the wrong place to go if you want to be cured of whatever you have. Yeah. You, you, I, man, it's, it's crazy because like I could see clearly we could go way deeper into this and we could probably talk for four hours pretty easily. Mm -hmm. Um, easily because you know clearly you 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 know you've you've dug deep into this stuff you've researched it you've lived it uh and then obviously um i've done something very similar i wanted to um i wanted to talk about your watermelon fast what um what are you doing right now how long have you been doing it and what are you experiencing from it that's a loaded question. I spent <laughs> hours just on that question right there. Um, but what I'm doing is today is my 159th day of eating nothing but water. Now, now so that's, that's the journey. Yeah, that's the journey. That's what I've been doing. Um, and I, I gave you the history of what I was doing right before that. And then right. that's why I started this. I started this. Once I realized I had some real addictions and I was eating for pleasure and comfort and all the wrong reasons, I jumped on the watermelon I, because watermelon was the least satisfying, least fulfilling food of them all to me. It's mostly just liquid. You know, it was, I felt it was the hardest fruit to use that would guarantee I'm not eating for the wrong reasons. I'm not eating for pleasure or comfort or to feel better or anything like that. Like I'm barely getting any calories, you know? Um, and so it was really about, it started off being about getting myself free from those addictions. Mm. You know, because I was already on the fruitarian journey and I had done fruit for a year. Okay. I ate nothing but fruit for a year, just, excuse me, a variety of foods. 
And then, you know, the cravings, the addiction, you know, I never wanted to stop. But the cravings, they eventually got the best of me. So, you know, just me really having a strong desire to get back on the fruit, that's the way I wanted to live, you know. After a period of time of doing a lot of shadow work and going within and finding out what was really going on with me, why am I having these issues, you know, boom, I started the watermelon. What I've experienced, like, off the charts. <laughs> you know, like, when you, when you remember, I was digging in the trash the night before. My goal on this watermelon was to just eat one thing. One day, and just let me see if I can do one day and nothing but water enough, you know, because I, I really didn't have a lot of confidence that I could do that. Mm. You know? But what happened was on that first day, now you got to keep in mind that I had a lot of shadow work involved, you know, before I got to this point. But on that first day, I was just free from all those addictions, all the remaining addictions I had. And this had actually become easy. Mm. Like watermelon was actually like satisfying me now. Like, you know, before this, I would eat fruit. And it, it's like it would do nothing for me. And I would still go to the vegan spot and get something to eat, you know, to satisfy the appetite. And then, you know, this day one, I made it through all watermelon. I was shocked. You know, so I did day two. Like, I've never had, like, a finish line in mind when I started this. It was really one day at a time. Okay. You know, I never had a goal or anything like that. So day two come. And it's even a little easier. So then day three. And it's just day by day. Like, day one was so good, I want to do another day. Day two was so good, I want to do another day. Mm up to 159 you know and it's like it's been so the journey has been so incredible like watermelon season is over mm -hmm. right but i'm in cleveland ohio and i met a farmer in cleveland of all places right and he's growing watermelon now Mm. After he's the only person that has watermelon, you know, and you know, I gotta pay. <laughs> right, <laughs> it's, not, it's not the same price I was getting them for when the season was in. Yeah, but I've been enjoying this journey so much. I'm gonna tell you, I, I paid like eighty dollars for three watermelon. Wow. And when I say three, I'm talking about one that was about thirty pounds, and the other two was pretty small. Okay. You know. And That's a nice like, premium. <laughs> yes, it is. Yes, it is. You know, and um, but that, you know, I'm about at the end now. You know, I'm going to stop around. When I'm done with these watermelons, then, you know, that's going to be it. So I'm, it'll probably be around 162 days. But, um, you know, we talked about this earlier. Physically, the benefits have been incredible. Like my energy has just been incredible, mm -hmm. you know. Um, spiritually, like my connection has has been strengthened so much. You know, it's like that part alone for me is addictive. You know, just the amount of things, like the amount of messages or communications that I receive now, you know, from that world. Mm. You know, just the amount of truth that is being poured into me, you know, it's just, you know, and truth is where it's at. It's all about truth, right? Truth is what sets you free. Like truth is everything. And it's just been coming in in such an abundance. You know, I've learned about hunger, what hunger really is and what it isn't, you know, which it isn't what we've been taught. You know, like a request for calories, you know, the body requested or needing calories, right? Which, you know, for me, it's really obvious because I'm not getting many calories at all, just eating watermelon, you know? Um, and I've learned about hydration, the importance of hydration. I've learned so many things, 
uh, and just I'm free from like I have no addictions now, at least that um, I know. Of. What what do you what would you describe hunger as, or what what is your experience of, of hunger? My experience of hunger is when we think we're hungry, we're really dehydrated. Mm. And what the body is really calling for is hydration, gotcha. calories. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, like, my journey proves that to me. Again, because, like, watermelon is very low calorie. And then just recently, you know, probably in the past two weeks or so, like I've even stepped it up higher and I've been doing intermittent fasting. Mm. You know, prior to about two weeks ago, I was eating watermelon all day in the night, two, three, like whenever I want, you know. And about two weeks ago, maybe a little more, I started doing this fasting. This is something that was just revealed to me, the importance of fasting. And um, let me see. I started with, I don't remember exactly, but for probably like the past week and a half, I've been doing, um, 18 hour fasting. Okay. So I have a window of six hours where I eat just watermelon and then 18 hours, I don't eat or drink anything. Just dry fast. And I've been doing that for about like a week and a half, I would say at least. Um, one weekend I did a 48 hour drive fast. You know, the uh, weekend before that I did a 24 hour drive fast. Mm. You know, and this I'm doing this every day. You know, I've been doing like the the 18 hours every day. Mm. You know, I stop eating around three or four p.m. I don't eat nothing else. I still go work out almost every day, right? And um calories well i'm really not getting no calories now i didn't got really really small but i'm not focused on that like i've been freed from what i would call ego that man's ego right of a got man it. supposing to look a certain type of way right you know i've gotten really small but i feel great like i feel incredible and that's I, what i go ahead i'm sorry i just i wanted to dive a little deeper into that because i've been sitting here thinking you know 100 and uh nearly 160 days watermelon i mean you're basically just you're basically just eating water and uh but you're working out so your energy levels are are good your cognitive function is good I would like to know what have you noticed as far as like your strength, you're working out. So what's maybe the difference in your strength? And then, you know, do you know how much weight you've been losing like over this time? I didn't, uh, I didn't weigh myself. Like I had stopped using scales, you know, because the scales would be discouraging. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> the scale would be discouraging because it's like, I wasn't totally free from that mentality. Gotcha. And so I'm like, okay, I'm, I can't look at that right now. That's going to throw me off. Okay. You know? okay. Um, so at the beginning of this journey, like I wasn't using a scale or anything. I stopped weighing myself, a, you know, quite a while ago. Um, as far as my strength, my endurance, you know, there's definitely a difference, right? Um Versus say like, and th this is how I look at it. You know, if you, you go to the extreme end of a bodybuilder, right? You know, bodybuilding is an unnatural lifestyle, mm -hmm. right? You don't look like that naturally. There is no way you'll ever look like that naturally. There's no way you'll ever be able to push that much weight naturally. There's no way you'll have that type of gym in the inner energy in a gym naturally right so they take unnatural supplements to give them extra energy almost like non-human you know to get them through these like insane and like insanely physically demanded workouts 
-hmm. Like the demand they put on their body is not natural. Their body is not equipped to handle that. You know, so you got the all of the tons of supplements, the protein, the pre-workout, the post-workout, the pills, the growth hormone, the testosterone, <laughs> the steroids, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right. On the other extreme, it, like I used to do HIIT workouts, especially like when I wanted to, you know, get rid of some weight. So I would do like four or five exercises, a minute each, no rest in between, you know, which that's what I would strive for. I would have to rest a little bit in between, but I would keep it to a minimum, you know. Um, I can't do that now. Okay. You know. Um, I need more. If I do a minute of burpees, I I feel like I need more time to recover. Gotcha. Right. So I have a like a workout where I'll do hundred burpees and fifty pull ups. You know, and um, you know, and then I also breathe. I also practice breathing in and out through my nose. And not mouth breathing, which makes it hard to uh, recuperate, you know. Um, and so my my recovery time in between sets, I feel like has increased a little bit. But it's not like I'm still able to get through these workouts, you know. And when I'm consistent, I still have moments where I'm not as consistent as I like to be, you know. Um, but as long as I'm consistent. You know, I'm not losing strength, which is really shocking to me. That's that's what I was curious about. Yeah, it's really shocking to me because, like, I get on the leg press machine, and I'm almost doing like a whole stack. Mm. And I'm not a big guy, right? You know, it's like how is this possible? Yeah, you know what I'm saying. And so, like, my pull ups, um, I'm about. Steady. I'm steady. You know, I could do on like between 10 and 13, and I mean like really strict yeah. reps. You know, really strict. I've been focusing on like getting that full range of motion and just, you know, focusing on form instead of banging out a bunch like this. Right. You know? Um push-ups, I could, you know, I could easily do 50, you know, in a row. Like now yeah. you know. <laughs> And so it's, and then it's like, okay, so how much strength do we need? You know what I'm saying? It's like, I don't need to be able to bench three, four, five hundred pounds. Mm -hmm. What am I going to use it for? There's nothing in my life that requires I bench press that much weight. Right, right. <laughs> no, I don't need to squat 500 or 1,000 pounds. There's nothing in my life that requires my legs be that strong. And right. I go hiking a lot. Like I love to hike and hill climb. You know, I could do everything that I want to do. So I'm not restricted or limited from doing anything, any sort of physical activity, you know, due to the way I'm eating. And I also have, like, I don't have joint pains or anything no more, mm. you know, which I used to have joint pains a lot before. So that adds to your strength and your mobility and your just your functionality. Yeah. You know, that's been more of my focus lately for, for quite a while. More of my focus has been on mobility and functionality. I started incorporating um, more stretching. You know, I just mm. bought a, a course that the whole course is it focuses on increasing your range of motion because this is what he said in the course um your body is like a rubber band right and so over time if you're not exercising then your range of motion decreases mm. you know and this is what causes injury you know and so Flexibility is huge. It's way more important than strength. Um, flexibility, mobility, like range of motion, these are the things that's important if you're thinking longevity. 
Right. And, you know, getting up into 80s, 90s, 100s, and, you know, still wanting to be able to walk and run without a walker or any type of assistance and, mm. you know, still be independent. So this is what I'm focused on. I can I can uh, speak to the um, so my brother John went on a, an amazing health journey five years ago something like that um, you know lost a hundred pounds got six pack abs um, but he did it with fasting he was primarily doing water fasting he was supplement with juice and then well he started doing uh, primarily juice fasting towards the end but. During that time, he was also getting a certification, his fitness certification. And what we noticed, so this is why I was asking you, I was curious to see what your experience was. He lost all of his bulk. Like he was, he was, he was extremely lean, but he was curling 50 pound weights. So like he's tiny and the bodybuilders would actually come up to him and be like, bro, how are you lifting those? You know? Um, and he had very supple muscles. It was very, they're very flexible and they were very functional, you know, not that big bulky kind of hulk. And I just learned that when you do things, especially when it comes to exercising, building muscle and stuff like that, when you do it and you're giving your body a different fuel source, you get a different result. And of course, like you mentioned, injury and, and recovery and things of that nature, um, you know, he saw improvements in all of those areas. So I think that I think what you're experiencing is in alignment and you make a good point, right? Like who needs to bench press even 200 pounds, really? Like you don't need that much weight. That's ego lifting, really. Like and then these dudes, I saw a guy who looked like Popeye. He did he did a muscle and his little ball popped up on his arm. From where he had uh one of his muscles had been ripped off his shoulder and it was bound up in his arm and so he had a little popeye bubble and it's like ego lifting and and you just ruined your like you damaged your arm permanently or whatever so um we're we're gonna have to have you come back on man because there's a there's a lot more that we could do and a lot more we can get into and I just, I, we there's just, so much. I, there's so much and so I'm, much. I'm trying to be mindful. Cause like when the videos get too long, people, they, you know, their attention span is, is just gone now. Right. right. But we, we definitely got to have you come back on. As a matter of fact, I think it might be cool to do a live stream where we can maybe interact with the, the, the group, but you know, what you've experienced is rare um, in the sense that, People don't typically show this type of discipline and consistency to be able to do this. And, you know, like a lot of people probably think if you just ate watermelon, especially the way you're doing it, you're not even engorging yourself on watermelon, you know, every day. Um, it, it just it seems unbelievable. And to have the result that you have with really no major deficiencies. And the thing also is like, I believe that this is a healing modality, the way that, especially the way you're doing it, like you're seeing so much healing and everything from it, um, but you're still able to live a very normal lifestyle. Whereas with like, when you look at traditional fasting, if you're, if you are fasting for, you know, 15 days or 20 days, you know, your energy levels get really low and you have times where you have just extreme brain fog you know detox symptoms are really off off the charts especially depending on where you are in your health and wellness journey uh and i know that you've inspired a lot of people to probably want to do the watermelon fasting because you know you've been in the group posting and just kind of documenting your journey and i'm pretty sure i know there's at least one other person doing it i don't know if they were inspired by you if you guys interact or not but um i think that it's a really good technique for those who want to get some healing and and be able to still have a level of functionality. Um, oh, one of the things I want to ask you, what, what is your, uh, if you even drink water, what's your water intake like? I don't drink water at all. I didn't think so. I <laughs> stopped drinking water. Um, well, 
when I started this watermelon. Um, but even before that, you know, um, I had periods where I wasn't drinking water. But it all depended on what I was eating, right? When I was eating fruit, I wouldn't drink water. But if I start, you know, getting off track and I'm hitting the vegan spots, then I need something to drink, gotcha. you know. But, um, yeah, I, I had no intentions on ever drinking water again. You know, I don't even... Honestly, like water isn't good for you. Water doesn't hydrate you. Yep. Yep. Um, so it's like, what's the point? You know, I've even read about uh like I've been doing some digging into this. Uh, it's called water toxemia, um, water poisoning, where from my last, you know, little bit of research I've done on this, there's been 11 people that died from drinking too much water. You know, I mean. Uh, seventy-five percent of Americans are chronically dehydrated. Chronically, yeah, we're drinking more water than ever before. With the with the introduction of the bottled water industry, yeah, like there is more water being sold and consumed than ever before in history, yet. Yeah. 75% of us are still chronically dehydrated. Mm -hmm. You know, water don't do it. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and so it's, yeah, I'm just like literally about the water anyway. You know, it's like, which water do you buy? You know, this, that, you know, they got water, minerals added to an enhanced flavor, but they don't tell you what these minerals are. Look like is a mineral. Right. So it's like you're not even telling me what's in it. I'm not drinking this. Mm -hmm. You know, they got people drink spring water, no distilled water, no distilled water strips the body of mineral, purify water. You don't gotta worry about that when you eat fruit. You know, fruit H3O2, that's what hydrates the body. Mm -hmm. You know, and then if you want to go back to uh, when we were talking about hunger, you know, really being a call for hydration. You know, I can do the things I'm able to do just eating watermelon because my body is hydrated. Right. You know, hydrated properly on a cellular level. And so I can function the way I function. You know, so. Yeah, the um, you know, the water thing is uh, it's a huge deception, and you know, when I started researching water, I went down that rabbit hole. Um, basically, you have to use plant material in your water to get any kind of benefit from it, which is uh very interesting. So you think we'll just skip the the water intake and just go to the plant material? The problem is. People aren't eating the plants. They're eating the fake food and they're dehydrating themselves. And they're, you know, it's so it's it's one of them things, a good, another air we have to really transition. You know, it's it's not something that um I would recommend people just, hey, just stop drinking water and just start eating. Like, you know, people are drinking coffee, they're drinking all these fake juices, they're eating, they're eating meat, they're eating things that are dehydrating them. So uh, definitely transition is important, but yeah, you're right. Like H3O2, that's what you, you want to get that. You gotta, you gotta eat, you know, fruits and vegetables and, um, everybody's at a different level uh, with all of this. And, and I know this was a really intense conversation. I just want people to understand that this is a, this is a, it takes time to get to this, you know, this isn't something you got to jump out and do today. Because anything you do that is better than what you were doing, you're stepping in the right direction, you know? And I think this is where some of the confusion with the diets come from. Because, like, if you eat a McDonald's diet, like, if that's if you eat McDonald's breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then you switch to the sad diet, you're going to get healthier. <laughs> because you're you're eating a diet that was better than the one you had before, but that doesn't mean the sad diet is healthy. But switch to 
you said switch to a sad diet, you're going to be healthier. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, if your diet is literally McDonald's, breakfast, lunch, right. and dinner, because there's people that do that. Oh, they just okay. eat. So I get you now. I get yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. That's, true. That's an yeah. interesting thing on that because I'm thinking, well, sad is bad too, right? But it's better than that. It's better than McDonald's, right? You'll die yeah. slower. Yeah, yeah. And you right. know the thing about that, why that's important is because it's more sustainable. Mm -hmm. You know, and, and it's all about sustainability. Right. You know, it, it doesn't do any good to go all out for a week and then you just go back to where you were before. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, I mean, you know, that's not really going to do anything for you. So it's about sustainability. So any step in the right direction, you just eliminate one thing that you were eating and you just stop eating that, you know. That's progress. You know, like in the beginning, you know, me coming off of cow's milk, I didn't just stop cow's milk. Mm -hmm. I downgraded. Vitamin D, 2%, skill, all of them. Like I stepped it down slowly and each step was sustainable because it's like I'm not really missing anything. Right. You know, and so that's what it's about, sustainability. And, you know, people seem to think a lot of times that, you know, when they hear these types of conversations that they have to just, you know, go from one extreme to this. And no, it's not that. This is more of just kind of like to like plant the seed. Like mm -hmm. this is, this is a, I don't even know if I want to say a finish line, but something to strive for. Mm. You know, you know, you want to kind of have an idea where you want to go. You don't want to just, you know, set out with no destination in mind. You know, like for me, I wanted to be on all fruit. I wanted to eat nothing but fruit. Like I had the destination, but I'm still way back here. But, you know, I'm slowly doing things that's getting me closer mm. to that, you know. So yeah, that's 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 really important because it could be discouraging if you think you got to do and overwhelming if you think you got to do this all at once and every everything you do everything you eliminate is making you healthier, right? Because ultimately, health is not about it's not so much about you know what we're eating, right? I mean, it is, how do I say this? It's, it's more about what you eliminate, right? And so if you're eating dead animals, but you're also eating fruit, that's not really, you know, that's good you eat fruit, but when you get rid of the dead animals, mm -hmm. you're going to see benefits, you know? So it's more about elimination than consumption. You know, that's why fasting is so healthy. You know, I was reading something where uh, it was a hospital in Russia, and I'm sure this was happening in a lot of other places as well. But when they would, when their patients would come in, this was back, back, back in the day, they would put them on fast. First mm -hmm. thing, as soon as they come in, with whatever ailment they have, they put them on a fast. Mm -hmm. You know, that's the natural way. That's what, you know, that's how it should be done. So it's not about I got to eat a lot of foods to get healthy. And, you know, people had this mentality, what supplements can I take to get healthy? Mm -hmm. And I was just having this conversation with a lady and, you know, they were they were talking about my my stones or crystals or whatever. And, you know, the benefits of copper and, you know, of this and uh, quartz and, you know, I didn't, you know, I didn't interfere with it i'm just listening but you got to address the diet it's not about what you add it's about what you take away you got to take away what's poisoning your body you know if you're poisoning yourself like there was this big sea moss thing going on but it, it's like sea moss isn't magic if you're still poisoning your body it's taking sea moss that's not going to do anything 
Right. You have to stop poisoning yourself. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah. Two prong. You got to go from both ends. You got to. This is why it's important. There's a dude. There was a dude. Uh, when I was as I was researching gardening, and I just come across all this this information. This guy got sick. Goes to his doctor, and he and and his doctor. Um, it's more of an old school guy. Was testing his blood, but he was he was looking for certain things, and he asked the guy about his lifestyle, which you know modern doctors often don't do that. And the guy's like, "Man, I eat from my garden." Da 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 da. And the dude is like do you use XYZ pesticide? And he's like, yeah, man, it's the only one I use. Da, da, da. He said, stop using it. It's killing you. So it's like the dude was doing the right thing. He had his garden. He was eating 60, 70% from his garden or 80% or from his garden, but he was using the pesticide. So even though he was eating from his garden, he was consuming so much pesticide and it was making him sick. I think he had heart disease or something. So, you know, we have to look at this thing holistically. At the end of the day, we got we got to, but once again, um, better is better. My one of my business partners says that, and I I love it. I love it. It's because it's like, kill all the noise. Better is better. Just take that baby step, move in the right direction, and do something that's sustainable for you, and then your mindset will change. You'll clear up some of the mucus, and you'll be thinking better. Your perspective will shift, and then you'll be ready to take that next step. And that's really how you get the results, maintain them, and you know, end up being successful. So um this was great, man. This was excellent. Uh, I do want to give you an opportunity to share any social media or anything. I know you've mentioned several times you do videos. I don't know if you've got a channel or anything that you want to, you know, put people onto. Yep. Uh I'm Kev Ramon on all my platforms. Um I'm I'm Kev Ramon on YouTube. Um, and, uh, for people that, you know, a lot of people just, you know, the questions they have about my watermelon journey, I have a playlist on YouTube called watermelon. All my watermelon videos are in there. So if that's all you're interested in, you could just go to that playlist. Um, but I talk about a lot of other things because spirituality is, that's me, you know, that's, that's. That's just what, that's how I live, you know. So I talk about that a lot. Um, I'm on TikTok. On TikTok, I'm Kev.Ramon. And I'm, I'm on Instagram and Facebook, Kev Ramon. So and I'm, I've been pretty active on all those platforms recently, so. All right, so y'all pick whatever your favorite platform is. Follow them on all of them. I'm going to uh, leave the description, I'm sure. Uh, They'll be on the screen too for you guys, but I'm gonna leave them in the description. That way you can you can access them easily. Um, you're also pretty active in the Facebook group, the AHA Facebook group. And so clearly you're you're out there. People, you're not hard to find, you're not hiding. So because I know people, I know they're gonna have questions, they're gonna want to interact and things of that nature. Um, this is gonna be a really uh, impactful video. So I really appreciate you spending the time with me today. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't already. And as always, the application of knowledge is power. And I'll see you all next time.